Generic greetings, fellow citizens of the internet. This is, of course, Richard, and today I bring you another episode on the OmniSlab 0.05 server. Ah, uh, and this will most likely be the last episode on the OmniSlab 0.05 server because 1.7 has been announced. It is currently in pre release mode, and we will most likely be seeing the actual release of the thing on Friday or perhaps a bit later if plenty of bugs are found and so forth and so on. But uh, the, the long and the short of it is that we actually do have confirmation that 1.7 is very, very close around the corner, and that means that we will be updating the server very, very soon, just as soon as we can get all of that together and get an event organized. So, what I am going to do for this episode is I am going to do a full ser server tour, sort of server tour, sort of thing, uh, starting right over here with the Dragon Egg, which is, of course, a relatively new addition to a reasonably old feature, actually probably one of the oldest features on the server. Um, this uh, originally was the stone block of potential, it was a stone brick, now it is a slab, which is much more appropriate given that we are in fact the Omni Slab server, but this is where the initiation ceremony acceptance or, uh, you know, like, um, uh, introductory sort of thing, ceremony that we do, uh, is held. And there will be a similar spot on the new server, rest assured, uh, because it is an entertaining tradition, which I think we will continue. Uh, but this is this is the spot, and this is the stone slab of potential, as it is called. Um, currently, it is cordoned off with this police tape. I guess somebody stole the dragon egg, and <laughs> I don't know exactly what's going on with that. But then you've got this crappy-looking theta that I built. That it it's bad. It's very bad. Promise I'll do better things on the real server. Uh, and then this is Cole's still unfinished house um, on the server here. Mm, nothing much has happened with it. Uh, this would appear to be, yeah, okay. This is this is a trap of some kind, rather obviously. I wonder if there's anything in the chest. Just out of curiosity. Uh, nope, nothing in the chest. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> I wonder what happens if you step on the pressure plates. Oh, okay. I was hoping that that wouldn't be TNT. Good. Um, and over here we've got a bunch of farms which have been here for a while. Uh, originally there was a farm plot actually right where this walkway is, and then that eventually got moved over there. And um, they've sort of expanded that way. Um, over here... We have a pig farm, built by Mr. E. Here we have an automatic wheat farm, built by Wreckabilly, I believe. Over here is a sort of council building thing that has gotten a considerable amount of creeper damage. Um, I don't think it's totally finished, but it is definitely looking pretty cool. Um, and then... Uh, here we've got an automatic chicken drowner, which has produced far more feathers than we know what to do with. A uh, fully automatic um, pumpkin and melon farm, which uh, I built in the very early days of the server. Uh, that was Mr. Economist, by the way. I'm not sure who did the town hall, but it does look cool. So whoever did that, good job. Um, okay. There used to be a wall of cocoa beans right here, but it has since been taken down and replaced with this, which is built by Dino Cow, um, and it is sort of a hollow tree sort of thing going on with um, cocoa beans planted on the inside, which is a cool sort of feature. Uh, here is something which I built um, without the lapis. I don't know why the lapis is here, but whatever. Um, and it is the donkey spawn spot. You'll notice that the donkey is missing. Somebody grabbed my donkey and was using it for something other than... I I don't actually know who took it or why. Um, but I haven't worried too much about it because I actually just got that donkey and then more or less forgot about it. I didn't. I never actually used it for anything. 
Um, actually, before I go down, I will go ahead and show around more of um, the above ground spawn first. Uh, you'll note three crafting tables. Those are the three crafting tables that um, uh, Cole, Wreck, and I initially made uh, like on at the onset of the server. Uh, so they all sort of just ended up there. Uh, this chest has been here collecting an assortment of random items since the beginning of the server. Um, this one's more recent. After the end fight, it was created to um, put important gear in that uh, people didn't know who it belonged to, and since then it has filled up with all kinds of things. Uh, which is which seems to be what happens with chests around here. Uh, but this little area over here is rather nice and picturesque and so forth. Um, this is my uh, house sort of thing, such as it is. Uh, probably the closest to an actual base I have on the server. <coughs> Excuse me. Aside from what I've built down in the caves down there, which really is nothing so far. Um, so it's a really nice little sort of area here, and I'm rather proud of how it came out. Uh, didn't actually even spend all that much time on it, but it came out quite nice even then. Uh, clearly, as you can see, nether portal sort of action going on there. I will show the nether in a bit. Then all of these um, tree farms were built pretty early on. Uh, once we were expanding past this little island here that we started off with, we started expanding outwards and building tree farms out so that we didn't have to um, worry as much about space on the island. Um, then here would be the um, uh, giant sugarcane farm that Mr. Economist has made. Um, it's very nice. It has served us well and given us plenty of sugarcane to work with. Um, that was expanding from the small, you know, loop of sugarcane going around my little area there. Uh, then over here is a project of the dino cows where he set up a bunch of farms. Uh, in addition to the ones over there, this is sort of a more compact building, housing all of the farms once again, and just giving us more resources to work with. Just very nice, very nice. Uh, and a whole bunch of room stands, and I still don't really know exactly what's up with that. But this is quite nice. Um, very nice to have all of these resources readily available. Bunch of chests that, again, have been here, I think, actually, originally since the, um beginning of the Iron Golem farm project, uh, which was um, Dino Cow once again. Uh, this is this tree is also Dino Cow's. Um, he has built this gigantic tree which looks very nice indeed. Uh, I'll quickly go up to the top here and show the view from it because it's rather spectacular and all. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty neat. Outside of that town hall thing is kind of <laughs> bizarre looking, but um, yes, this is sort of a nice overview of spawn. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, so heading back down once more. Uh, what next? I guess the trading hall. Uh, so this was constructed originally as just sort of a pier going out. Um, but now it's a full building, thanks to, I believe, Mr. Economist. Uh, Rec and I were originally working on this, but since then, practically everyone's pitched in, uh, working on unlocking villagers, and um, got some really nice trades and so forth going. Uh, it is very cool, very nice. Um, and I will definitely be sad to see these guys go, because they've been amazingly helpful to us. Uh, then over here, my fully automatic sugarcane farm produces <laughs> sugarcane at a very slow trickle, but a noticeable trickle, and it is a good proof of concept, is what I sort of like to think, um, because it is theoretically at least like 99.9% .9 effective or something. Uh, you are practically never going to get sugarcane um, falling and not getting picked up. Um, and it is fully automatic. Those uh, pistons are bud switches that activate when the sugar is grown, and then 
another piston comes out of the wall there and pushes the sugar cane into the hoppers in the floor. So that's very nice and so forth. And again, produces a small but significant amount of uh, sugar cane over time. Uh, and this is a villager breeder, which um, I think is thoroughly defunct at this point. Uh, originally, I intended to set it up so that it would be able to be shut off. I thought I had, it didn't seem to work, so we've just sort of thoroughly disabled it so that it can't breed more villagers and crash the server. Um, but, mm, yes, and then this is sort of a villager, mm, a villager processing station. Uh, we can sort of look, do we want to use this guy? I hear a zombie. Where is that zombie? Huh. I definitely hear a zombie. Is he underneath or something? Yep, he's underneath trying to get to the villagers. Idiot. Ah, okay, but so yes, uh, indeed the, um... The villager breeder is defunct, but it still has a very big stockpile of villagers, so we've been sort of sorting them out, and either, I guess these guys have been killing them, uh, with a lava system, uh, I wanna, I don't really wanna kill this guy, but that button would kill him, um, and then this would, uh, this lever would flick so that we could send the villager into the trading hall. Uh, then over here is the, uh, Iron Golem Farm. It's very nice indeed and has provided us with quite a lot of... Um, I'm kind of worried that it's going to get struck by lightning now. Uh, <laughs> but it has provided us with quite a goodly amount of um, iron. Wow. Yeah, it's full. Go ahead and make some of this into blocks. Do, 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 do. Um... So yes, it, it produces a whole lot of iron, um, and in fact the area is chunk loaded uh, using hoppers pointed into unloaded chunks and that kind of thing in order to, in fact, make it so that it, like, whenever the server is going, uh, it will in fact be producing iron. Uh, no one even needs to be online. So that is very neat indeed. And... All this is unlit, and I feel like that is a stupid idea. Um, then over there is a small island where Dino Cow originally set up his house, and this pathway is ill-conceived. <laughs> uh, but yes, um, all that remains would appear to be, um, aside from a world hole, uh, all that remains would appear to be some lamps and this structure over here, which I guess this was a storage room of some kind. We've got, yeah, it's pretty much been cleaned out, I guess. Um, I'm not sure exactly where he moved to. I guess the tree. Um, I guess the tree is basically Dino's home at this point. Uh, let me get on up here and. Oop. Okay. Whatever. Good enough. Okay. And I think... I think that's pretty much it for above ground, aside from the stronghold, uh, which isn't technically above ground, but it's elsewhere um, in the overworld. And... Uh, like... Perplus's house. Uh, and that kind of thing. Oh, and yes, of course, Beacon. Uh, which is currently set to resistance. I probably would have preferred haste or jump boost personally, but that is what we decided on, so we shall see. Uh, so here we go, uh, ladder on this side, water drop on this side. So we've got that kind of action, very nice. Uh, then over here is a setup which Wreck got going, I believe, um, with enchanting table, uh, anvils, bunch of chests for drops from the skeleton spawner, which is, I believe, up... Oh, it's right over there. Okay, somewhere around in there. That's actually really cool. Um, these two chests I just sort of added here for personal temporary storage. But as you can see, um, grinder off and grinder on, like that. And 
if I let it go, then it'll spawn skeletons. And that's about what it does. Uh, and the drops will get picked up and chunted right into there, which is very nice indeed. Don't know what this chest is. I think it was originally uh, somebody dying and then <laughs> chesting stuff. Okay, there we go. We just saw a skeleton. Usually they didn't die. Uh, usually it's designed so that you can just uh, one-hit kill them. But since fall damage seems to be very erratic with this kind of design, it's far from reliable. And these guys, I think they might have names. I don't know. They just keep showing up. Uh, people keep trapping gold zombies holding items. So we've got two over there and one over there. Um, but over here we've got... Oh, this is a trash can, by the way. Lava down there. Don't understand the appeal. But then small tree farm for my own purposes. This is sort of my base such as it is. I don't exactly have all that much. Um, actually, I the bulk of my wealth is right here. Um, and the thing is hardly that... That's supposed to be an R. That is supposed to be an R. I'm guessing that that was a parting gift from Cole. Um, but yeah, some furnaces back here. It's nothing to... not too much to look at. Oh, and this was actually a present which I never actually got on camera, which was from Mr. Economist and the Villagers, and it was, as I recall, a pick and a helmet. Uh, diamond. Very nice, and I did appreciate that. I do appreciate that. Dark spawn. Go ahead and light that up. So I spread some grass down here from Mr. Er, uh, blah, 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 Wreckabilly's area over there. I just basically <laughs> ran a line across and stole some of his grass. Uh, so that's all well and good. And what next? I guess um, then over here, I mean, is uh, Wreckabilly's area. So we've got nice, very nice man-made tree, which I like very much. Uh, his storage room down there. Uh, sort of a tunnel, grassy, naturey sort of area with a river, uh, which looks very nice indeed. Connects up right around in there, and we've got some uh, pumpkins and melons and stuff around, which looks very nice indeed. Like I say, storage room, uh, easy access to stuff, very nice, very slick, very elegant. Um, and then he's He's got this going, which is absolutely jaw-dropping. Um, and he's carved out this river, which, um, as I recall, went like right through lava pools and stuff, which I guess he just carved away, uh, which is crazy. Uh, he's got a mob spawner up there, which I'm not sure if it's actually fully functional yet, but it's going to be basically a uh, villager breeder sort of deal, uh, which should be cool, or would be cool. And that kind of thing. So, um, then I guess I will probably uh, head over to the Nether and show off that stuff. So I will be right back with that. I just realized that I missed some stuff here at spawn. Uh, for one thing, Eeyore. Uh, apparently, everything happens to poor Eeyore. Not sure who that is, who did that, but reference to Winnie the Pooh, as I call. Uh, but this down here is Mr. Economist's area, which I would not have wanted to miss uh, because it's got a very nice sheep farm. Uh, hit the button and the sheep pop up and you can you know, do your shearing thing and so forth and each one pops up sort of individually so you can hit them all. And then the water stream underneath flows right down and flows all the wheat into a central area where they get collected in these chests. Very nice, some is in there to demonstrate, that's awesome. Uh, then through here uh, is this main area, I guess, storage and stuff. And I imagine his videos would display it better. Uh, then automatic um, AFK fishing farm uh, sort of thing. So you can just hold down right click and all the fish will be dropped directly into that little chest down there. Um, it'll automatically be able to, you'll just be able to catch fish and keep going automatically without actually being 
at the computer if you just wait down your mouse or something like that. So that is very cool indeed. Uh, and then over here on the other side, um, for one thing we've got uh, another small um, set up here. We've got actually no chicken in there. Well, whatever. Ordinarily there would be a chicken there and it would lay, lay eggs periodically so that we could get eggs. And we've got lots of eggs as you can see. Uh, and then down here, uh, this was somebody's old base uh, <laughs> underneath the island. Um, and then this goes down to more caves, I guess. Um, someone's horse has made its way down here, I guess. That's, that's cool. And this is a cow farm, which originally we were trying to automate a bit. Um, I was trying to set it up so that you'd be able to uh, make foals and... Or, not foals, uh, calves. Yeah, the, the, the cow equivalent. Um... And then these cobblestone pieces wouldn't be here, so uh, if you could imagine um, one block high calves, uh, if you were holding wheat right here, they would come forward and get sorted out from the main you know, body of cows, um, drop down and then get shunted down into this sort of area here, where um, on top of the hoppers, where when they grew up, they would be able to, they, they, would, they would end up with their heads in lava and they would get cooked. Um, but it didn't exactly work amazingly, and there were a bunch of bugs and glitches, and it was not all that efficient, and one of the things that we were looking to get was actually, um, uncooked sake, and this design is pretty bad for that, given that it automatically cooks the cows, so basically we just walled it off and started using it as a normal cow farm. Uh, so, <laughs> you know. Uh, and then I think that that is actually all that there is in the overworld at spawn. So, into the nether it goes. Um, so here we have the little area that I made pretty early on to connect up the nether and so forth. Um, down here is a quick drop and ladder to get down further more directly rather than a more roundabout way that I will show. Uh, over here is off to Perplus's house, and I'm not sure what that is, but maybe I will check it out later. This way goes to uh, several things. Firstly, the stronghold, straight ahead. Um, and secondly, down here, we've got a long and circuitous route, which originally, as you can see through this sort of side passage, it's sort of been covered up, but this was originally wide open and th a passage through the nether, but uh, we walled it off so that it would be a bit safer. Um, and so this sort of evolved over time as we, you know, sort of bridged to one thing to the next to the next to the next and whatever as we needed to go to different places. So here's the quick drop that I showed before. Uh, that's the um, rum up there that I was just at. Um, then this tunnel over here goes to the uh, Blaze Farm right here. I'll quickly show this off, uh, at least its location, because I've shown it in operation on camera before, I believe. I'll just briefly go over how it works. Uh, so this is, of course, Stronghold. Uh, I believe the only, or not Stronghold, but um, another nether ruins sort of thing. What do people usually call these? Fortresses? Yeah. Um, but so yes, we've got the spawner right up here, spawning chamber, blaze of spawn, fall down, uh, slowly work their way down one level at a time just through randomly moving about. Once they are outside of the range of the spawner, it doesn't matter. It won't block the spawner from spawning more, so it doesn't matter that there aren't automated piston pushers or anything there. Um, they'll just slowly work their way down into the center and won't be able to get back up. And once they're down in the center, one last row of piston pushers will in fact get them down into this chute right here. And when they are here, we will be able to activate uh, the gate to close it off and the crusher in order to crush them down to exactly one hit point. Uh, this whole thing is pretty much Mumbo Jumbo's design. Uh, so go ahead and check that out uh, for more in-depth tutorial and whatever. Then we pop out a block here to 
hit them or whatever. Um, and this this toggles the lights. Uh, it drops lava down above to uh, deactivate the spawner itself. Uh, but we can either kill them this way with one hit kills, sort of punching, or we can just throw a splash potion uh, with that up. And either way works. I recently set up an automated system so that you can put blaze rods in here and it will distribute them into the furnaces and then items to be smelted would go in here and they would be distributed through the furnaces as well at least the top ones and then you'd be able to take out your goods um, from the top to get the XP and so forth any junk that was thrown in that didn't end up in furnaces or whatever would end up here and it would appear that quite a bit of stuff has ended up in here <laughs> I don't know exactly why but I guess that's just sort of, again, what happens to chests that are just sort of around. Um, yep. <laughs> I have three name tags in there. <laughs> wow. That's some crazy stuff. That's 34 pistols and a wither skeleton skull. Ha! <laughs> Alright, whatever, whatever. Some crazy stuff. Um... Oh boy, I get to show off some of my weapons and tools. Let me bop those guys first and then go in with my replacement sword. Aha, uh -huh, he, he dropped his sword, huh, cool. Um, then let me snipe the blaze, get him out of here. Get him out of here. And... Very good. Very nice. Um, so yes, this is actually only a looting 2, sharpness 3 sword. I had a sharpness 4, looting 3, but an enderman attacked me randomly at spawn, and I don't know what happened to it. I wasn't able to get it again, but oh well. Um... Anyway, so the, over here is then um, a plains biome. I'll go ahead and head all this way and get over there so that I can um, show off what's going on there. Uh, which is not a whole lot, I don't think, but this is where we got a lot of our horses and stuff, so it is worthy of note. And other folks have been doing more here than I have, and I believe they've been doing a lot of mining and stuff. So I will show it off. Do, 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 do. It is night, I will go ahead and sleep. So I would not like to have to deal with mobs and so on if I don't have to. Uh, yeah, I was told that my donkey was um, here, and it it is not a pig. I don't know why it would be called a pig pen, because it had a donkey in it. Uh, but clearly the donkey is not there. I don't know where the donkey went. Um, oh, oh, and that's, that's coal. Yep. Indeed. Indeed. And then, giant flippin' hole. I don't know exactly why this was created, or if it just sort of spawned this way. Um, and then a big ravine down there, and I believe a bunch of mining has been done down there. I don't know my way around down there, and I don't know of anything all that important that has been built or um, so forth down there, so I am not going to show it, uh, I don't think. So I'm going to go ahead and head my way back to... Um, the more main sorts of areas, and then I will come right on back. So, back here, uh, as I pointed out before, this is uh, the tunnel to Perplus's area. That is nothing. I don't know exactly what it is or why anyone made it, but it doesn't actually go anywhere. Uh, so this tunnel leads to where Perplus is set up, uh, which is quite far away. But that's all right. Um, aha, shortcut. Okay, that's cool. Very nice. All right. Seems hastily dug. Unrefined. That's okay. It gets the job done. 
Um, aha, okay. Portal over here. Is there a way to... Okay. Whatever. Whatever. Very nice. So, go ahead and go through here. And show off over here. He's got some storage over there. A uh, little red clay thing here and a green clay thing there. Um, some farms up there. Uh, pig pen. Snow golem. And some nice paths around. And this is actually a man-made lake river thing that he made, which looks very nice indeed. Um, quickly show off some of the interior sort of area. Uh, looks quite nice indeed. Personally don't love the cobblestone, but you know, it's all a matter of taste. And that kind of thing. Then he's got... Ah, uh, he did... I, I do know that he worked a bit on this, which looks very nice. Sort of a tunnel thing that goes through. Um, and connects up to the other side here where it then flows into the water. That is a skeleton among the cacti. <laughs> okay. Um, but yes, he's got all kinds of interesting stuff going on over here. Um, I think that's pretty much it though. I think that's more or less all of what he's got going. Go ahead and go back through into the nether um, and I'll probably cut and, and get myself back to the um, main area once again. So here I am once more coming from that intersection once again and heading along here to, as I pointed out before, the stronghold, uh, which is right through here. Uh, there's this portal right here which then connects to here blank wall, there we go. Um, this area, which is the stronghold, uh, which is actually, this is quite low, this is Y5, so one block below is gonna be bedrock. Uh, there is George the Creeper, I believe. Um, Prisoner George. Um, and so yeah, perp <laughs> Ah, okay, and then this is where Perplus was being held. Alright. Very nice. Uh, but yes, the rest of the stronghold, I believe, is unremarkable. Uh, this all is left over from the uh, Ender Dragon fight uh, and Wither fight. We did both at once, because, or at least in quick succession, the same session. So we lost all of the XP that we got from the Dragon while fighting the Wither. Um, so over here, for the most part, the end is pretty unremarkable, I think. Once again, we haven't really gotten a chance to build all too much or do anything all too impressive. So it's mostly just the stray cobblestone tower and that kind of thing. Um, and then the uh, portal back, obviously. Um, but the main construction in the end is over here, where we've got... Um, a ladder system down to a walkway. Ladders take very long time to climb down. I've got a ladder system down to this walkway, which goes across to, you can see it in the distance, very impressive structure indeed. Uh, built, I believe, primarily by Mr. Economist, uh, and people can correct me if I'm wrong. But... It is still not totally finished. Uh, it's got all this netherrack around, which I believe was not intended. Um, and there are a bunch of spaces where Endermen can spawn where they're not supposed to. But uh, we do not need any more Ender Pearls. Yes, I believe that we've got at least like yeah, a couple double chests full. <laughs> um, some decent books starting to build up. 
Pretty cool. And this is just the traditional under under the where all one it kills and you can just go through and grab a whole bunch of XP. Which has helped immensely in my uh, quests to get um, bunches of diamond tools and things. Because ordinarily what did I look at? What did I look at? What? Okay, whatever. Um, but yes, I I used to, I used to be of the sort of notion that um, using diamond tools in general was just seriously not worth it, um, and you know it would just be you know I usually didn't even use iron I usually just used stone, um, which actually frankly was very stupid and time consuming and even more not worth it. But the thing was that stone was renewable and neither of the other materials were. Um, of course, now I know about iron farms and stuff, and that's all very much more um, attractive. But recently, after getting into villager trading, I started unlocking these trades and started getting the um, actual diamond tools directly from the villagers, and therefore, with just a bit of time, and um, I'm wondering where the Enderman is that's angry at me. I'm making a lot of noise. Um, but with, with just a bit of work, um, time and effort, uh, one can get tools fully renewably uh, for emeralds, um, which you can get the emeralds for things like wheat and sugarcane and stuff. So that was an absolutely awesome revelation, uh, and I have since been sort of going on a rampage and getting all kinds of awesome tools. Uh, as you can see, I've got some boots left over from my quest to get a decent pair of boots, which is here. Um, this is actually quite a good pair of boots, in my opinion. Uh, we've got some protection for Feather Falling 4 action going, so that practically negates negligible fall damage. And, for example, Ender Pearl damage gets reduced to half a heart. Oh, no, a full heart. Okay, maybe it's variable. That was a half heart. Okay, yep, yeah, so probably somewhat variable. Um, so yes, uh, and then I've got my Silk Touch pick, uh, which was one of the first ones that I enchanted. Um, then my Fortune pick, which was actually, I believe those two were the first two things I enchanted on this server, which was just a little bit ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> like I just popped some, uh, 30 levels enchants on two picks and I got Silk Touch and Fortune 3, it was great. Uh, but then, uh, Efficiency 4 on Breaking 3, Fortune 3, Fortune 3 I don't really get on an axe, but, you know, whatever. Uh, otherwise it's quite a nice axe. Um, nice shovel, um, decent work pick, um, and then I've, I actually made this bow, um, handcrafted it basically from a bazillion Power 1 bows, and, um, some, uh, other like manually enchanted books and things uh, for the unbreaking and all that. Um, so it's a very nice, very nice bow, um, and it's served me well, um, and it will never ever bloody break. It's awesome. Uh, then I've got the headhunter, which was actually given to me by um, Dino Cow, and shortly after that, I lost my better sword, which I believe I named um, Go Away and Give Me Stuff. It had knockback two. Sharpness 4 and Looting 3, and that was awesome, and I was very happy with it, and then I lost it. But it doesn't matter all that much because everything is going away anyway! Ah. But anyway, so very nice. All of this is very cool, and it was very neat to get those enchantments, and it's a wonderful proof of concept to, you know realize that all this stuff is in fact renewable and it makes enchanting so much more satisfying and fun um, and I feel a lot better about doing things like combining diamond picks and so forth which I never would have done in the past because um, it would have just felt like too much of a waste of diamonds uh, but that was a bit nerve-wracking not world not loading there um, but so so I guess, uh, what, what is there left? What's left? Is there anything left? What's left? Seriously, is there anything that I'm forgetting? I might have hit everything. I might have even actually hit everything on the server. 
Or at least everything major. Um, I don't know, I guess. Um, I will head back and... Um, oh, I didn't... Oh, dear. Drat, I'm back at the plains. Well, don't, don't kill me, zombie. Alright, I will head back to spawn and then I will regroup try and think of anything that I have forgotten, and then I will get back to you then. Alright, back at spawn, and I figured that I might just round this last formal episode off with something of a display of wealth and power and so forth. I had gone mining for quite some time, um, and I got myself a bunch of redstone. Uh, incidentally, contents of my ender chest, two books that I was carrying around as um, more potential feather falling four boots if I killed mine, accidentally lost them through dying or whatever, saddle from trading, compass from trading, um, emeralds from trading, coal ore from uh, the mining trip earlier, uh, blaze rods, carrots, basically just stuff that I could theoretically need and that I might not have on me that I could just grab quickly. Um, and my original bow, which, uh, this guy has actually been with me for quite some time. Uh, it came out of the skeleton spawner, actually. This was, a uh, skeleton spawner bow. Some skeleton spawned with this. It's crazy. Uh, but I just repaired it, uh, from low durability up to full, and I've used it for quite some time. Uh, and that bow served me very well. Right now, what I think I'm going to do is I am just going to place down a whole bunch of redstone ore and break it all at once with Fortune 3 and it will be very happy and very, very satisfying. Oh, that is not what I meant to do. <laughs> uh, and this will be a good way of rounding off sort of the server here, or at least my experiences on this server as we move forward into 1.7. So which one is... Yes, okay, this is my Fortune 3 pick. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I've never actually used this um, Fortune 3 pick before, I don't think. I don't know if it had no durability taken off. Maybe I... No, 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 no. Glitches, glitches. Drat. Alright, let me, let me relog. Doop. do doop. Nope. Doop. Doodly doop. Doodly doopy doop 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 doop. Okay, good. Um, I don't know if it actually had no durability um, taken off. If it did, I probably am forgetting something that I did with it at one point. But this is the first real time that I'm testing out anyway, and goodness gracious, this is amazing. <laughs> so much redstone. So much redstone. I love it. I love it to pieces. Oh, that is... That is crazy. How, m how many was that? I was 41, I think, right? Something like that. And I got one, two, three, four, five, and a bit stacks. Oh, that is, that is totally amazing. So, that's going to be pretty much it, I think. Um, barring unforeseen circumstances, I think we're pretty much done here. Uh, so that is very cool. Oh, by the way, there's a golem here. I don't think I ever actually mentioned that. But yes, there's a snow golem here. Pretty self-explanatory. So I will see you guys next time and in a different series.